is John T for the Boxing Voice. I'm down at Shoe Box in Northampton with their pro that's just signed with them here. Uh, Michael Stevenson, how are you doing, Michael? I'm doing, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm really good. Thanks for asking. Yeah. So, look, new gym to you. I think you used to train down in Luton. Is that right? You've yeah. just transferred over here. Tell us yeah, about that. Yeah, so literally, um, James used to teach a class in Bedford at my brother's gym. And I know that um, he's got, like, outstanding young prospects coming up. And he's got experienced pros like Kieran. And he's got young prospects like Ethan and Ben Vaughan. Who are like Commonwealth gold medalists, national champions, and he was. I noticed at the um, my brother's gym where he used to do, where he does classes, and he used to do classes, sorry. And I just asked him like, "Hi, James, and Michael, I'm a pro. Um, I'm looking to move gyms. Like, would you consider me um, train? Are you training me?" He was like, um, "Let me see what you're about. Come down, do some sparring." So last summer, I had like a six-week trial. I came and I sparred and trained with the pros and yeah, then after he said yeah, he was happy to take me on, which was a good move for me, in my personal life and boxing life, so that's how it all started with James really. That's quite a vote of confidence mate, because I know that he's, James is a bit selective on who he takes, he only wants like half a dozen pro fighters in at once because he's got to look after him, so really good that he's took you on. So, so far I think in the pro ranks, you've had five fights already, yeah, that's four good. wins and just the one defeat. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about how, how those fights have gone so far. Where was your pro debut? So my pro debut, luckily, it was a home show in Bedford, to be fair. Mm -hmm. Literally sold about three, four hundred tickets for that. Nice. So, um, yeah, then like my first fight, he just outboxed him. Second fight, that I thought, okay, let's have a 50-50. So I got in a 50-50 straight away. Not making excuses, beat me in the night, but to be fair, like, I weren't training properly, um, my nutrition wasn't there, I was cutting the weight like last minute on same day weigh-ins, mm -hmm. I just wasn't there and like I said, I got into the ring and I was drained and literally that's what just happened, learned so much from it though, from a boxing part and like I said, a life me as well, so, but straight away we offered the try to get a rematch with him but he didn't accept and he, I'm glad that he retired now. He said he's got family issues and he wants to stay time with his family so hopefully he comes out of retirement and I get my revenge no, I him back. But um yeah so that's my defeat. Like the defeat has learned me so much. Like didn't have no amateur background. I had it's come from five white collar fights um and I knocked them all out within like three, four rounds. So I thought okay I'm quite a sportsman person and I'm good at boxing and my two older brothers, they were boxers as well in the amateurs and they used to do Muay Thai so I've always been around it but I used to take football seriously. Then when I snapped my leg then I started to go boxing properly and I started to enjoy it then I got down a lot of weight and just started fighting from there really and just packed up football and focused on boxing, had my like, white collar fights then I turned professional but I was learning on the job and I thought I was better than what I was and that defeat taught me so much. So that's interesting. I'll tell you what I find really interesting, and you've just kind of said it there, for anyone who's not aware, you weren't an amateur at all. No. You had a few white collar fights and then gone straight into the pro. So to be fair, mate, you are definitely what they'd say learning on the job. Um, and then that must be quite tough for you because you haven't had many much experience in the first place. Do you find that hard? You did then, but now I think I'm experienced. Like I said, I've been sparring with top guys, literally like British champion, European champions, mm -hmm. and I've learned my craft during that. So, and I know I'm much better than what I believe in. But I do believe in myself, and I know that I can take me to levels that I want to get to, but there's always levels in boxing. Cool. And I'm not going to say yeah, I'm going to be a world champion in 18 months. I have to stick to levels and know my limits and take the right fights at the right time. And if I feel like I can take the right fight at the right time or go for a fight that I will, that's going to push me, then I'll take it. But I'm not going to go, oh yeah, I'll fight Canelo next week. Let's be realistic, okay? Mm -hmm. So you've got to be, I'm a realistic person, but the aim is, we've got an aim and we've got a target and that's what we're aiming for, so. Excellent. Any ideas when you might be out next then? Oh, so, um, not really. So we're still like, I'm still in a managerial um, like dispute at the moment. So just trying to get try and get a new manager. I've had a few offers. 
uh, which is James helped me especially. Um, and especially with these top guys, we've got like Frank Warren guys, we've got matchroom guys, so I'm getting, and I'm at a gym where we've got top class world athletes here. Mm. So I'm getting attention as well, I'm sparring with them, I'm mixing with them. When it comes to interviews and stuff like that, I'm getting involved. So good. I've had offers from good managers, so we've got, uh, me and James are gonna sit down actually this, oh no, next week to be fair, and we're gonna talk through and see what my next plan is for the year about fight so hopefully I want to fight in June July if not we have to be August September it's realistically it's tough at the moment yeah, it's isn't tough. It? unless you're signed to a TV deal yeah it's hard to get out but we've sent offers to a few guys on TV deals yeah and like I said they've rejected it I've called some people out on Insta that usually works mate keep yeah, working away that's what that. I'm trying to do <laughs> I'm trying to call a few people out I've got some responses but um yeah, so we're just waiting until the crowds are back, hopefully getting us, I haven't fought in, what, 18 months now, so it's yeah. quite hard, so I need to, get back in. Yeah. need to get back in as soon as possible, really, even if even if it's abroad or anywhere, I just need to fight just to get that buzz feeling again. Yeah, yeah spot on. Okay, well, look, before I let you go, you're a middleweight, so I just ask you about a couple of big upcoming yeah. middleweight fights have been announced, uh, and I think you sparred one of them, so we got a huge domestic dust up between uh, British middleweight champion Denzel Bentley and the Commonwealth champion Felix Cash in what looks like a real 50-50 part of paper. Who wins that one? Well, Denzel's my boy, isn't it? So Denzel's my boy from day. So generally, I think Denzel beats him. I think Felix, I think everyone thinks, oh yeah, Felix is going to come, he's going to put Denzel. But it happened with Tyson Fury and um, John Eroda. When to beat a bully, you have to beat a bully. It happened in Dental's fight as well against Mark in the first fight. Mm -hmm. When Mark just pressured and pressured him and Denzel boxed him back foot. Denzel's a beautiful boxer. Um, and the only way you can beat Mark if you press him forward happened against Liam Williams. It happened when you pressed him. Happened. And then when Denzel went forward and pressed him, he got beat. And I think that's going to happen with Felix. I think Denzel will stand his ground and he's slick as well so but my thing i think denzel will beat him on points i think felix will get frustrated and start lunging in then denzel will start hitting him more interesting yeah so i'm going for a denzel points or a denzel late stoppage Heard it here first, get your money on it, right? Yeah, 100%. Good stuff. Right, and then one other British way, um, it's even a bigger step up. So Liam Williams, who's done fantastic. He's earned his shot at a world title now by being mandatory. He's got to go out to America and fight Demetrius Andre, who's the undefeated champion. What do you rate Liam Williams' chances in that fight? Listen, Liam's a British lad, so I wish Liam all the best, and I hope he does do it. Um, like you said, Andreas, he's... Um, He's a world class fighter and he's an Olympian, he's an undefeated world champion. What is he, 32 and 0, 33 and 0? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be tough for Williams. I think Williams has to press him, but if he presses him, it goes in Dimitri's favour because he's a slick boxer and he'll handle it. Down. So we'll see the game plan what Liam comes with, but hopefully, Liam comes back with the world champion and we have another. British world champion so brilliant well look thanks for taking time out to talk to us we're looking forward to your next fight and we'll catch you soon all right yeah that's it thank you cheers Michael if you enjoyed the video feel free to hit the like subscribe and share as always if you want to support us to the next level head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice we have tons of exclusive from border wars and title betting shows the list goes on and on and on but in addition to that if you guys have questions for fighters trainers and promoters this is where you can submit them we will run out get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.